All right, in this section we're going to talk about setting up of the features and the advanced tabs under the setup. So we'll go to the features tab first. Basically there are four different unlocks that the Integra can have. Each unlock is $750. That allows you to access uh, the features that this unlock entails forever on this display. However, the unlock is for this. Now, you can tell by looking at this that we have the automatic swath control enabled on this system. We also have the multiple product unlock enabled and the NORAC UC5 interface. The final one that we don't have is the fan frame and the feet gate control for a spinner type spreader. To unlock this, we highlight the fan frame feet gate control. It turns blue and we come over here and hit the unlock button. At this time, it gives us the serial number and our registration number. So to unlock it, you'll have to contact Ag Infotech, give us both of these numbers, and we can call in and get you an unlock code. Once we give you that unlock code, just simply type it in and hit the OK button. All right. Now, if you have the right code, when you hit the OK, it's going to tell us that you have successfully unlocked the fan gate uh, frame unlock. But now, but now it's telling us we have an invalid key. So we just go ahead and hit the check mark and you have to hit cancel. That's how you unlock one of the codes. Um, the next thing that we want to talk about is the advanced screen. I have a lot of neat information on here and a lot of neat settings. The first one is a standby. So if you forget to shut the uh, system down and you turn the key off, you can have it shut down immediately at zero minutes or it's going to stand by at five minutes, 10, 15, 20. All right, most people are gonna have it shut the system off. As soon as you turn the key, it's gonna wait five minutes and it's going to put the system in a standby mode so it's not using up your battery. It doesn't truly shut the Integra off, but it does put it kind of in a sleep mode. Um, the next thing that we have is we have a little button here that tells us to export data files on shutdown. You have the option to export the data files when you want them exported or every time you shut the Integra off, it'll send the data files out to your flash drive. To do that or to enable that, just go ahead and put the check mark in that little box. Okay, if you don't want to uh, do that automatically, you can just come in and hit export data files and it will go ahead and do that right now. So it's giving you a warning that says log files will be copied to the external uh, storage device and will be removed from the internal memory. Do you want to continue to copy the log files? Go ahead and hit yes and it will copy those log files over to our uh, storage device. Again, hit the little green check mark to continue. Now, one thing that we really recommend that you do at least once weekly is create a backup file. So once you have your uh, USB drive in the uh, Integra, you can come in and hit the create, up, create Backup file. It's going to ask, do you really wish to create the, or a backup of all your data to the external device? Well, we do, so we hit the green check mark. So at that point, it's going to go ahead and create that backup. If you have a lot of data, this could take several minutes. We don't have much in this system right now, so it backs it up quite quickly. Once it's done, it'll tell you that it successfully created the backup, and it's going to give you this file number. The file number looks rather complex, but it's really quite simple. It's just 2011, so the first four digits are the year. Then 01 would be the month, so it would be January, and 06 would be the date. So it tells us that this was created on uh, January 6th of 2011. So even though it looks complex, it's really not. Now, if you want to, let's say you have a problem and you need to send your Integra in for repair, you can then come in, put your flash drive into the new Integra that we give you to use for a loaner, and come in and restore all your data that you have from the last time that you've done a backup. So to do that, you hit restore from backup. It says, do you wish to restore the data? This will completely replace the current data that you have within, and it's going to replace it with the backup files. Hit yes to continue. So you go out, and then you find your backup file, and it's going to be underneath your monitor, which this is the serial number of your monitor. Highlight the latest backup file, 
and then hit OK. And it's now going to basically shut the system off, erase all the data that's in there, and then restore it with this new information that we have. Wanting us to select our operator and continue. All right. So we've pretty much covered advanced section there as far as creating backups and restoring backups. You can also come in and clear your internal memory with this button. To do that, um, it's going to ask you if you want to create a backup file. We're going to say no because we've already done that. Now it says, are you sure you want to clear all the data? If you did, go ahead and hit OK. If not, hit the red X and you'll cancel right out. The other thing you can do, and you may be asked to do from time to time, is to copy the debug files. So if you're having a problem with your display, it's creating a log of any files or any problems that you have. You can go in here and copy these, tell it to copy everything over. Well, we don't have any debug files, so it didn't copy any, so it gave us a, uh, a warning. But that's really a nice feature that you can go ahead and copy those over, send it to myself, we can take a look and see at the errors that you've incurred, and we can figure out what's going on with your unit. Basically, the button down here that says firmware module, if you connect to any module that's out of date, that has out of date firmware, you can come in here and you can force the upload of the firmware to that module. Now, if you connect to an old module, it should warn you and ask you if you want to update it. If you tell it yes, it'll update it for you automatically. If you tell it no, then you're going to have to come in here and update it later if you can't get that module to work hit the return key and it takes you back. Um, that's another thing that we haven't really talked about. Anytime you see the return symbol, it'll take you back to the last menu. Advanced parameters and service mode, we want you to stay out of there unless you are instructed to go into either of those with a technician on the other line. So return back and we're back to our main screen and the next time we talk to you, we'll talk about uh, setting up uh, a configuration for